if you want to take that next step towards success, you've got to get better at reading. Now you might be thinking, really, David, reading, that's, that's the thing. I already know how to read. Well, the real question is, are you actually using that skill set of reading the way that you need to in order to be successful as a developer? Hey, junior devs, dev mentor Dave here, helping you bridge the gap from learning to code to launching a successful career. This is a skill set that junior developers usually aren't very good at. In fact, there's a lot of mid level and senior level developers that really are not very good at reading either. Now, I don't mean that they can't read or that they read very slowly or if they have any uh, dyslexia or issues like that, maybe some of them do. But what I'm talking about is not just an ability to read, but a willingness to read. And there are kind of three main areas of reading that you need to master and that you need to make a part of your habit of your daily job so that you become a more successful and a better and a more reliable developer. In fact, if you will make it a priority to grow in these three areas in regards to reading, you will not only be successful on your own, but other people like senior developers who are supposed to be there to help you will appreciate you a whole lot more. So what is it that we need to be better at reading? Well, the first thing is error messages. In fact, I saw a comment on one of my other videos that oftentimes even senior developers are really bad at reading error messages. And let's be honest, a lot of times when you're looking at the console or you're looking at whatever uh, debugging terminal you have and you see a bug or you see an error message come across, depending on how it's laid out, how it's formatted, it can be very scary. Oftentimes there's a lot of words that are put together and it can be a little confusing. But if you take the time to really sit there and, and read it and read through it, you'll see it's not just a bunch of gobbledygook. There's purpose in it. There's, there's specific statements there that will actually help you figure out the issue that you're dealing with. All you need to do is take the time, slow down, take a deep breath, realize that it's not the end of the world, and read through the error message. Read through it and find out what it says. Most of the time, it's going to help you find pretty closely where the issue is. It's going to tell you oftentimes a line number in your code. It's usually going to tell you the file that that, that that issue is in. So it's actually going to give you a lot of information to help you find the issue in your code. All you have to do is read it. I cannot tell you how many times I have worked with a developer to fix a problem. And the first thing I ask is, what was the error message? And they either don't know because they didn't even look to see if there was an error message or they just copy and paste it to me and don't tell me what the issue was that they found. That tells me they didn't actually read it. They didn't look through it. They didn't try to understand what that error message said. It's not just the error messages inside your console or your, or your debugging output. It's also just notifications inside your code editor. Most code editors these days have a little squiggly line when there's an error, or maybe there's a highlighting or some sort of warning to you that something that you wrote doesn't look right. Don't just ignore that. Actually pay attention to what's going on. Read the code that you wrote. Read the, the highlighting. Put your mouse on top of the highlighting and see the information that pops up. Read through it. That will save you time. That will save a senior developer time coming over to help fix the problem. And it will make them a lot happier with you if you've already gone through those steps and you've already tried to fix the problem. So as a junior developer, you've got to get really good at learning to read error messages and understanding the error messages and allowing those error messages to, to lead you to the right place. And you'll find out that you'll get better and better and better at fixing your own bugs, the better you get at reading and going through an error message. Hey, if you find this information helpful, could you hit the like button for me? It helps me get this information to more people and hopefully help them on their journey to a successful career as well. The second category you need to get better at reading are tickets and tasks. Most likely you have some sort of ticketing or task system wherever you're working. Even if it's not really at a full-time job, you should go through the process of writing tickets or writing tasks so that you know the things that you want to work on on your different projects. But if you're working for a company and you have somebody else that's creating those tickets for you, you need to be good at 
reading through the ticket and finding the things that you need in order to do your job. Again, even mid-level developers and senior developers have a hard time reading through tickets sometimes and seeing the information that is there and thinking through the process so that they know what it is they're supposed to do. I cannot tell you how many times I've written a ticket and it had everything that the developer needed to do their job and I get questions that are answered right there in the ticket. That's very frustrating for the person writing the ticket. That's very frustrating for a senior developer who comes over to try to help you understand your ticket. Now, does that mean tickets are always perfect? No, of course not. Tickets will sometimes leave out information that you need. So obviously you need to ask questions if you're not understanding something, but you need to take the time, slow down, read through the ticket, make sure that you understand everything that's being said and make sure that you've got all the information and make sure that you, you can put it all together and make sure that any questions that you have are about things that are not stated in the ticket, about things that the ticket does not cover. Because as soon as you start asking questions about information that's already in the ticket, man, that is not good for a team working environment. So you've got to get better at reading tasks and tickets. If you'd like to get more mentoring advice, click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon to be notified each time I upload a new video. Finally, the third thing that you must get better at reading, and honestly, it's something none of us really want to read, but it's something that we need to read, and that is documentation. See, one of the problems of things like YouTube is that we have lots of ways to learn visually. We have lots of ways to to learn audibly. We have lots of ways to, to get information without actually spending time reading through documentation. But the reality is that those tutorials really don't cover everything that you could possibly need to know. They really just scratch the surface when it comes to implementation and knowledge of whatever kind of documentation you're looking for. At the end of the day, no matter how many tutorials you use, more than likely you're going to need to go to the documentation in order to use that framework, or that theme or that language or whatever it is that you're that you're using or that you're watching on that tutorial you need to be able to read documentation now again is that fun no not really but documentation has come a long way in the last 10 to 20 years in fact documentation used to be offline it used to be in a bunch of books but today we have a lot of great tools that help us provide really good documentation and and most Good packages, most good languages have good documentation, but you need to learn how to read it. You need to learn how to use the documentation. You need to learn how to search for it, how to find the things that you're looking for in the documentation. You need to learn how to walk through the information. You need to learn how it's organized. You need to be comfortable going to the written word to help you solve a problem. Again, at the end of the day, your goal as a junior developer is to become independent. Your goal is to not need a senior developer to come over here and show you in the documentation where something is. Your goal is to be independent. Your goal is to be self-sufficient. Your goal is to be a developer. So there are three things that you've got to be really good at reading if you want to be successful as a junior developer. Those are error messages, tickets and tasks, and then documentation. Hopefully this has been a help to you on your journey as a junior developer. Thanks for spending time with me today and I'll see you on the next video.